we are also currently live on YouTube. So if you would like to share um, on social media later on, you may share it with our uh, official hashtags. We will be sharing to you the link of the YouTube live stream as well. So you can share it to your friends or family who are unable to join us right now. So you can check our live stream in the YouTube link, which we sent in the chat just now. And you can also share it with our official hashtags, slap, uh, hashtag space for PH and hashtag SJAC. Um, I think we're going to be starting soon. Uh, so we have a lot of people from all over the Philippines joining us. Um, a lot from Rizal, Kazan, I see Negros Occidental, Bacolod, Iloilo, um, Mandaluyong. We also have Sri Lanka, wow. Uh, Singapore, South Korea, Japan, India. Uh, we also have Bohol, Marikina, Malabon. So you can all see where everyone is just coming from in the world cloud right in front of you. So we also have another trivia question um, and our guest speakers will be coming in as well as we're answering this next question. So I think we are all here because we all love one thing and that is space. So please feel free to send in what is the first word that comes into your mind when you hear the word space. We'll be giving a few minutes for that and then you'll see the responses and we will be starting after that. So we also have a couple more people coming in. For those who are just coming in, you can again join us for our trivia questions in the link that was sent over in the chat at pollev.com backlash HQ973. Uh, and our current question is about what do you hear when you hear the word 
what comes into your mind when you hear the word space? So we're having a lot of answers right now, stars, vacuum, universe, Mars, NASA, astronaut, planets, physics. We're also going to be having a film star soon, so hopefully that also comes to our minds in the future, well, in the very near future, probably by tomorrow. <laughs> So I think we're going to be starting. Um, so we currently have our guest speakers from SJC, uh, Christine, Bernadette, and Harley. Uh, so I think we'll firstly be sharing to you what SJC is about. So you can see a quick video about SJC. Um, I, Christine, I think you're on mute right now. Hello, so welcome everyone. Hi. Welcome again to the first day of space for the Philippines. So this is this will be the introduction to SJC. If you know or did, didn't know SJC before, so this is a great time for you to know more about the organization. So uh, first of all, we would like to share a short short video about SJ, SJC. All right. So again, welcome. Uh, first of all, we would all, we would like to introduce ourselves. So I'm Christine Jane Atienza, and with me are Bernadette Joy Dutera, Harley Kizagan, and Florence Basuba uh, Basubas. Uh, I'm currently one of the executive secretary of SJC as of the moment. Uh, so I'm giving the floor to the rest of the crew for today to introduce themselves. Bernadette? Yes, hi everyone. So my name is Bernadette Joy Gatera. I think uh, many of you may know me already. So uh, right now I am the regional coordinator of SGAC for the Asia Pacific region. And um, I was the previous national point of contact uh, for the Philippines as well um, in SGAC. And uh, yeah, I am um, based in Japan right now, but I am very happy that we have finally um, managed to launch this uh, first ever local SGAC event. So I'll give the floor to Harley. 
Oh yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Harley Kizagan, and uh, I'm proud to be able to invite all of you guys to join us today. We've been planning this for quite some time, and we are really, really happy that uh, we are able to push through despite uh, the pandemic. So currently, I am the national point of contact of the Philippines for the Space Generation Advisory Council, and I'm currently based in Makati. Um, my work is mostly on uh, like um, commercial applications of space and uh, also other projects uh, that I do with SJAC and other space-related organizations. So uh, I'd like to give it back to Florence for the next part of the things. Yeah. Hi everyone, I am Florence. I am also the national point of contact along with Harley. And uh, I actually kind of a new member of SJC, but at the same time, uh, if you're ever thinking of joining SJC, there's always a lot of avenue for you to come and join in. I'm currently based in South Korea, but I love to also like be engaged in things uh, regarding space, especially in the Philippines with the FILSA um, coming up soon. Uh, well, it's already it's already established, so you will learn more about that tomorrow. Um, and then I think Christine will be sharing more about SJC. We'll just be sharing a link to you on the chat so you can ask questions um, in that link if you ever have any questions. But if you also have questions that you would like to ask on the chat, feel free to do so. Christine. Okay, uh, thank you, Florence. So, uh, Florence has been appointed as N NPOC just this month, I think. Yeah, so, let's get, give her a round of applause for being the new NPOC for the Philippines. Uh, by the way, this is uh, this uh, coffee hour is not for not that formal. So, feel free to ask questions while we are talking. I mean, you can chat uh, your questions uh, during our presentation. So, all right, so uh, uh, to get, uh, here uh, in this slide, you can see our organizational chart. So uh, with this, uh, you can see the overview of how extensive our organization uh, is right now. So um, we have a lot of members, thousands of members. We are currently, I think, uh, uh, at 15,000. So uh, uh, with that number, we also have a very, um, a kind of complicated organizational chart. So uh, this is just to give you an overview. So here you can see I'm part of the, uh, me and Bernadette is part of the executive committee. I am, um, I'm part of the executive office as the executive secretary. So I'm supporting the executive uh, office and also the co-chairs. Um, I'm also supporting all of the regional secretaries. So um, every region, every six regions of SJC ha uh, has their own um, executive regional secretaries. And then uh, here is Bernadette. So uh, Bernadette is a part of the Asia Pacific uh, as regional coordinator of Asia Pacific region. So basically she coordinates all the national point of contacts for Asia Pacific. So there's um, she basically coordinates with Florence and Harley for the um, activities within the Philippines because Philippines is part of the Asia Pacific re region. So uh, there, uh, we also have project groups, uh, human resources, just like uh, other um, companies or organizations. We also have the legal teams and partnerships and event managers. So uh, we are quite large where we are large we are organization so uh sjc if if this is the first time you've heard of sjc so what is sjc sjc stands for uh, still non-government a non-profit organization so we are composed of youth uh young professionals young space professionals, students age 18 to 35 years old. So uh, SJC was conceive, conceived uh, during the United Nations Conference on the Exploration of, peace, of Peaceful Uses of outer, uh, outer Space in Vienna in 1999. So uh, last year, 2019, we had our 20th anniversary. So uh, SJC has been uh, existing in 
two decades already. Okay, so what do we do? So uh, we are we are a group of global volunteers. So uh, most of us uh, are volunteers. Uh, we do we do this uh, because of our passion for space. Uh, but we also have uh, members and staff, uh, two staff uh, in the global office, uh, uh, paid staff. So we have our executive director and our um, operations managers uh, as paid staff of SJC. But the rest of us, the chairs, the regional coordinators, we, we are all volunteers. Uh, we do this for our passion for space. So we also uh, connect the our members to top space professionals, partners with a lot of space agencies, um, uh, space companies, startups, and big companies. So yeah, we also give the next generation of space sectors uh, leadership opportunities for uh, by managing events or managing partnerships with um, space agencies uh, and a lot more. You will see it uh, later on. All right, so this is our network. So again, uh, I, as I said a while ago, we are composed of 15,000 members and counting uh, in 150 countries and counting in six regions of SJC. So uh, right now we have six regions. So we designated uh, the six regions of SJC as Africa, Asia Pacific, uh, Europe, um, Middle Middle East, NCAC or North North uh, North and Central America and the Caribbean and South uh, America. So we also uh, we also have different teams for different regions of SJC. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is the numbers last year. So I think by this year this. Uh, uh, we have additional uh, members for this year because I think uh, we appointed a lot of uh, NPOCs this year uh, in in uh, a lot of other parts of Africa not highlighted here. So yeah, we're continuously growing and growing as an organization. So hopefully, uh, you will find inter uh, you will find interest in um, joining us uh, as members of SGC. All right, so uh, SJC has five pillars. So that's events, project groups, professional development, scholarships, and UN-related activities, which we will uh, be discussing each uh, in, a, in a while. So uh, first, UN-related activities. So as, as I mentioned, uh, SJC uh, was conceived uh, because of the UN, because of a UN meeting. So Naturally, we are uh, part of uh, the UN for space. So uh, SGC holds a permanent observer status at the United Nations Committee for Uses of Outer Space. So we have three meetings every year uh, in Vienna. Yeah, in Vienna. So uh, SGC represents uh, the outcomes of all its conferences and projects at uh, the three uh, three meeting meetings, the scientific and technical subcommittee of COPUS. Uh, this year it was held last February three to fourteen, uh, and then we also have a legal subcommittee of COPUS. Uh, this was cancelled uh, due to the pandemic this year, and COPUS General Assembly. Uh, I think it postponed for next year. We are also have a consultative status of the United Nations Economic and Social Committee representatives or UN ECOSOC. And then well, we are also partners uh, with the United Nations uh, Office for Outer Space Affairs. So yes, we have an office just for outer space affairs. So uh, we are partners with them for a project that is called Space for Youth. So Space for Youth is an annual essay, uh, competi essay writing competition for, uh, for the youth, for uh, space uh, young professionals and for students as well. So I think this year's uh, theme is about climate change and the application of space in climate change. If you'd like to participate 
uh, in the in the next space for youth uh, check out our website by early next year i think uh, around february or march all right so for the international regional local and thematic events I'll, i'd like to call on uh, miss bernadette yes thank you so much christine um sorry before we proceed probably uh christine can we already activate the q and a link for the remaining presentations thank you uh yeah yeah so the link is uh on the chat everyone if you haven't uh accessed it yet okay i uh i think i can proceed hmm. so uh this is for the events that we have so i will be starting from an international point of view up to the regional up to the local and thematic events so first for the international events next please okay so uh sgac we have this uh biggest event of the year, which we call Space Generation Congress or SGC. So this is held in conjunction with the International Astronautical Congress, the IAC. It's the biggest uh, space convention every year. Uh, and this SGC, uh, we have around 150 delegates from over 50 countries. So we have high level speakers, subject matter experts. So this is really big event. So um, Actually, this year, it was supposedly in uh, July, uh, in conjunction with the IAC, but as you all know, because of the COVID situation, uh, this has been uh, translated into a virtual format, which I will also be mentioning um, later on. However, next year, uh, we invite you all to apply and uh, join us in the SGC. So it will be held in Dubai and the expected dates are around October 21 to 23 of next year. So if you have the chance, please, please apply. Next slide, please. So aside from uh, SGC, we also have what we call the SGFF. So uh, this is uh, more of a space industry event. And this is in conjunction with uh, the Space Symposium. This is in Colorado Springs. So this is a very uh, high level uh, discussion of uh, space and career topics, networking events, and uh, yeah, basically a lot of key, uh, key subject matter experts in the space industry. Um, will be uh, you will be you will get the chance to meet them in this event so uh, sgc sgff and next slide please we also have uh sgx yes so uh sgx is another international event uh held in conjunction with the satellite show uh maybe you are aware of it uh this is uh uh, an event in DC and in partnership with the Future Space Leaders Foundation. And uh, this is a very uh, technology focused event as well from um, a lot of young professionals, industry experts, and, uh, govern uh, government leaders as well. So um, if you can um, imagine like this is usually, uh, so these events are in the United States and in Europe, but the IAC and SGC. So every year um, the venue changes. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, so as I mentioned, SGC, our annual event was um, the face-to-face -face SGC was uh, affected by the COVID situation. So this year, for the first time, SGC had what we call Space Gen United. So it's the first ever uh, virtual Congress of SGAC. So we have around 143 delegates from 53 countries and these uh these are all done virtually so i think um this has been very successful and uh, uh florence as well uh joined uh this event so uh we are not sure yet uh if there will be virtual congresses in the future but uh yeah uh, should there be i also encourage you to to join since uh you don't have to travel anymore you can just join um from the comfort of your home virtually so yes um 
that's it for the um, international events. I will move on to regional events. Next slide, please. So for the regional event, we have uh, the main event that we call the Space Generation Workshop or the SGW. So as Christine mentioned, we have six regions. So we also have six SGWs. And in the case of us, for the Philippines, we are under the Asia Pacific region. We have the APSGW. So this is a two day regional workshop focusing on the space issues that we have here uh, in our region. And on a country level, we also have the SG country. So for example, SG Vietnam or SG Nepal. So this is a more focused uh, local event, uh, usually just one day with uh, networking opportunities and so on. And we are now having uh, a local event of our own, which is the space for the Philippines. So it's the SG uh, Philippines uh, as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, yes, so for the APSGW that I have been mentioning, so we already have six APSGWs and every year it uh, the venue changes and actually in 2016 it was held in our country in the Philippines in Laguna in UPLB and uh, so yeah, um, the APSGW is usually in conjunction with the Asia Pacific Regional Space Agency Forum. So it's a, a really big event for uh, space industry, space agency leaders here in our region uh, where they discuss. So the APSGW is usually a side event of that. And as you can see, um, the hosts uh, vary. So Japan, um, Indonesia, Philippines, India, Singapore, and uh, last year uh, it was in Japan as well. And uh, for your information, um, next year it will be in Vietnam. So if you uh, also want to join, please, uh, please apply. And uh, this year as well, we will be having an online version of this APSGW. So please watch out in SGAC's website uh, for the details, which will be out very soon. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to um, highlight the events in Asia Pacific uh, that we have for the recent years. So we had SG ASEAN. So uh, this is a, an SGA event specifically for the ASEAN region. So this was held in the Thailand and uh, the first one was held in Singapore as well. So this is sub-regional two-day workshop and we also have local workshops, SG Vietnam, SG Nepal, SG China, all of these happened last year and in 2018. And this year now we are having the SG Philippines. So these are some of the photos. And next slide, please. Yes, so uh, I would also like to mention um, some of the events of SGC where uh, we have the Philippine delegates. So uh, I think uh, the most number of Philippine delegates was in 2016, where of course we had the APSGW in UPLB in Laguna. So uh, you can see the photo there. And uh, the succeeding APSGWs as well, um, I am very happy that uh, we always have uh, Filipinos in APSGW for the past four years or five years, maybe. So yeah, um, this is the photo from APSGW 2017. Me and Albert came 2018. Uh, yeah, um, these are the delegates 2019. And also for uh, SG China, uh, Christine was there as well. And the, the recent SG ASEAN, um, Catherine was there as well. And I think she is here uh, on the call as well. So, so yeah, um, through the years, uh, there are Filipino delegates already in SGAC events. And uh, for the first time now, uh, we have uh, our own event locally. Yeah, so with that, Turn it over uh, to Harley for um, the local events for the Philippines. I think uh, he, he will be showing us um, exciting activities for the Philippine uh, Filipino SGAC members. So Harley. All right. So. Good 
good evening everyone um so uh, regional and international events but don't worry because we have uh, we are cooking up things for local activities as well for the space generation advisory council localized in the philippines so this is what we've had planned for 2020 um, i will be presenting to you the for the next slide please I think the first, uh, the first thing that we've been planning is a two-day symposium. Uh, so a two-day symposium that is meant to be both a discussion and a workshop. This was this meant to be the first Space Generation Philippines or SGPH. And the intention of this one during the two days is that it will collate uh, Filipino students and young professionals who are interested in space. What I want to highlight here is that the event is not uh, is not geared only towards technical people, but we're also encouraging space enthusiasts who are practicing their profession outside uh, space industry, for example, or the technical side of things. So uh, the, the, main, the main point of the symposium and the workshop is that it will establish itself as a platform where the discussion of issues in the local space industry will be done by students and young professionals. So most of, most of the participants that we are targeting for this one would be students. So it's not just college students. We can also cater to high school students since now we have senior high school. And then, of course, the young professionals. So the event will be composed of uh, panel discussions, keynote speeches, and group discussion. As usual in most SJAC events, the, the two-day workshop will be composed of like working groups, where in each working group will be given a certain topic that, will, that they will have to discuss over the course of the two-day workshop. Um, so we can get a gist of what will be the working groups. It's not constant, but there will be usual working groups that's going to come up every now and then. So when will the SGPH live event be? We are not sure because this year, it was supposed to be last March, I think, but because of the pandemic, we had to revise the, revise the format and everything. So hopefully by December or November or maybe early next year, we can, we can already launch this type of event. All right, next slide. So the next one that we are excited to present would actually be uh, this thing we are trying to call SGPH Think Space. Think of it as like a think tank. And uh, the, the, the goal or the objective of the think tank is that it will be geared towards students and young professionals. And there will be two focus or two aspects that we will be uh, delving in the think space uh, that is for capacity building for space activities that is outside acad academia so how do we how do we intend to do that um, we will be we will be coming up with short-term projects on space engineering like let's say for example 3d printing of mini mini rovers or like design workshop on how to create a mars rover or like uh, satellite, mini, mini satellite engineering workshops, those kinds of things. And also we are, we are trying to promote space entrepreneurship, uh, which is really, really exciting in the case of the Philippines because we are not known as a country to produce rockets and you know, uh, create our own launchers and stuff like that. But uh, it would be very exciting to see how an emerging space economy like the Philippines would fare in terms of participating internationally with space activities. And entrepreneurship is one of the best entry point to that. Um, emerging space economies have a good uh, entry point at this moment in space industry because there are so many commercializations, there are so many uh, things you can, you can try. And so base would try to, to delve into that. How do you promote space entrepreneurship from uh, outside academia? And then another one is uh, SGAC is known for uh, partnerships. So one thing that we can do is we can, we can create a year-long project with students and young professionals, and then they can, they can develop uh, recommendations to local government units on what are the possible applications of space in terms of let's say good government. So this is like a core research group. And then the main goal is solely to develop partnerships between of things. And they then and then they can come up with policy. Next slide please. 
so for the for the rest of the year actually uh since we are not expecting the pandemic to be any better until maybe mid 2021 we are trying to with events in the form of online workshops so it's not just a webinar series but it's a workshop uh, wherein participation and interactivity from participants are required and so one of the three things that we might be focusing on uh, for this year are opportunities in the Philippine space industry. Since we already know that there's an emergence or the establishment of the Philippine space agency uh, that, that comes with it would be opportunities in the Philippine space industry. And since it's a new thing, some other people might not know it. Um, a lot of the technical guys, probably like the engineering people, those kind of things, they already know that there's a lot of opportunities in the Philippine space industry, but what we'd like to do is that we'd, we'd want to encourage people even outside the current space industry to participate. For example, if you're a medical doctor, is there a way for you to work with the Philippine space industry uh, as a doctor, as a medical doctor, as a health practitioner, as a dietitian, those kind of things. Uh, so other things would be so align with that, how do you transition from a non-space career into a space career? Uh, we would also love to help people do those things because a uh, space industry in itself or the the, air, the sector of space is a highly collaborative uh, industry. So it doesn't really, I mean, it won't, it won't foster much if everyone is technical people. Um, the other one would be, of course, uh, the persistent question of will there be a NASA in the Philippines? And I think everyone knows already that there is there is the Philippine Space Agency, which is our own national space agency, and we'd love to hear about uh, what activities they have in store for the future and how you would be able to participate on that. Okay, um, next slide, please. I think the next one is a personal favorite. Favorite. Um, this one is about designers and space. Uh, as I've as I've been repeating since the start of this presentation, I'd like to reiterate that. Participation in space activity is not just towards engineers, not just towards, uh, you know, scientists. Designers can also take place or can participate in this in this area. So, for example, one of the projects that I've done for the past month is like design uh, a Mars city. And one one of the aspects that uh, we've been looking to is like, how do you design a habitat in Mars? And for that, it's not just scientists or physicists or engineers who can come up with the design. But designers or artists in general are very uh, creative thinkers in that they always think out of the box. And so we'd love to get their crazy ideas, no matter how unscientific it is, into the fold because creativity is the key to innovation. So yeah, even if you're a designer or a non-engineer non person, currently in the audience right now, you can also participate in this particular event. Next slide, please. So of course, SGAC is well known for being a network. And so we would be, we would be nurturing the culture of uh, networking opportunities for the Filipino people, space enthusiasts through, through connecting local, local groups into the bigger uh, international groups or the International Network of Space Generation Advisory Council. So one thing that we can also look into is like, how do you, how do you foster collaboration to ignite business ventures? Um, so we'd like to do this even for, from a young age, like for students and young professionals, because as I, I've, I said a while ago, uh, entrepreneurship can be an entry point for emerging space economies. And then we will be launching this maybe two months or uh, one month from now, the SGPH Bulletin, which is basically like a newsletter or a blog, wherein we will be featuring space breakthroughs locally and internationally. So if you're a writer or, or would, love, would love to participate in space, but you're not an engineer, but you can you know, write stories and stuff like that, you can reach out to us and then we can write these things together. Okay, next slide, please. And... So I've mentioned a while ago that uh, a key, uh, what they call this, it's always present in workshops of SGAC, like the APSGW, that there's always a working group associated during the entire workshop. And so in the context of the Philippines, if ever we will be forming the workshops, these are the five 
uh, working groups that we are looking forward to develop and like revolve discussions around. So first would be Internet of Things for urban development. We know how, how urbanized uh, places in the Philippines are getting, but we need to do it sustainably. And so we can discover how space technology can be applied for a sustainable urban development. And then we have small sets for disaster monitoring, which is basically obvious for us as we are always hit by typhoons and natural disasters. Of course, we're an agricultural economy as well. So how can space technology drive agricultural economy? And then of course, space education is very, or capacity building is very important so that everyone can participate into the space industry. And like I said a while ago, even health practitioners can participate in this through space medicine. So these are the working groups that you would probably look forward to. We hope that you'd look forward to them in the uh, upcoming months. Okay, so how do you connect with us? Uh, we will be showing a while later uh, the website of Space Generation Advisory Council. You can be a member there. But if you'd like to connect to the local network of the Filipino space enthusiasts, you can take a screenshot of your screen right now so that you can scan the QR code, or you can go to the link uh, that's shown below. Um, this will be a form so that we can gather your information and you, we can invite you later to our local Slack group. In our Slack, we always give, give updates as to what are the events that we are currently uh, uh, pursuing in SJAC Philippines. So yeah, take a screenshot of your screen right now. But we will be posting the link as well in the chat. So don't worry about that. So th those are the exciting events that we've, ha we've been cooking up for the Philippines. And we are so excited to open the doors for every volunteer currently in the audience right now. And so yeah, please do reach out to us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Harley. So um, we're going to be transitioning to our intermission. So we're going to be having some trivia questions. So please feel free to open the link that has been sent on chat again. So it's again, pollev.com backslash HQ973. So we're going to be having a few trivia questions um, as intermission right now. If you want to participate, please feel free to participate. So it's gonna be fun. If you need to take a short break from uh, the webinar to like go to the bathroom or get a water break, you may also do that at this point. But we're having our space trivia right now. So everyone, please open your tabs to paulev.com backslash H973. So the space trivia section will be composed of five uh, probably weird questions, but <laughs> we hope you'll participate. Um, we are we will be having a leaderboard at the end of the poll. So yeah, let's encourage everyone to participate. After this one, we will be having the coffee hour or the networking event where you guys, I mean, after we entertain the Q&A section, you guys can also like video chat with us. Okay, mm -hmm. so... Everyone is ready. Should we proceed, Lauren? Yeah, we can proceed. And if, and if you are from the Philippines, like the ones who are on the leaderboard in the Philippines, you might be getting some prizes. So yes, participate <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, participate now. All right, let's go to the first question. So yeah, our first showing? question, yes, it is showing, Harley, thank you. Um, our first question is, what was the name of the first crewed test flight from a commercial space company? Um, is it Crew Dragon Demo 2, Starlink, SpaceX Crew 1, or Starship's Mission? So this is a multiple choice question. If you go to the link, you will be able to choose the choice. Um, <laughs> So we're getting some results. 28 people have answered the question, 34 people. If you haven't yet, send your oh. response. So we'll be able to, is the timer done? Oh, yeah. You can still send your response yeah. and you can open the tab to participate in pollf.com backslash H973.
So the correct answer is Crew Dragon Demo 2, which 64% of the ones who answered got right. Uh, Harley, are you showing the leaderboard or is it going to be the next question? <laughs> Ooh, okay. So we have like a lot of people who got it right. Well, we have another question. So please feel free to open the poll. So this is a question, probably especially for the ones in the Philippines. The Philippine Space Act was passed to establish the government's national space program. It was signed on August 8, 2019, and it is officially known as. So we have some choices. So is it National Space Development Program or NSDP, Republic Act number 11363, Philippine Space Development and Utilization Policy or Peaceful Use of Philippine Space. So we're seeing around 33 people, 34, we had like around 40 earlier. So let's see. Oh, wow. A lot of people are answering. Good job, guys. So one second and we're up. And the correct answer is, it's the Republic Act number 11363 or the Philippine Space Act. So, wow, a lot of you actually got it right too. So leaderboard, Harley. I think I will just show a lot of people. <laughs> wow, this is a lot of people. We'll probably have to raffle the prizes. Um, so we have three more questions, so fret not. So the following satellites are developed or were developed in the Philippines, except we have some choices for that. So is it Maya 1, Aguila, Diwata 2, or Diwata 3? Diwata 1, sorry. So again, the following satellites were developed in the Philippines, except Maya 1, Aguila, Diwata 2, or Diwata 1? This is a pretty tough, kind of. <laughs> well, we'll see. We have five seconds left. Submit your answers. And again, you can go to the link if you haven't yet. Great, so the right answer is Aguila. So that was, Aguila was actually the first satellite of the Philippines, but I think we bought it off from another country or satellite provider. But other satellites, Maya 1, Diwara satellites were developed in the Philippines. Ooh, wow, we have four people left in the leaderboard. So we, act, we can actually give out the prices. <laughs> so next question is which of the following is not a Mars mission successfully launched this 2020. So we had quite several Mars missions launched recently. So is it Tianwen-1, Perseverance rover, Hope Probe, or Mangalia'an-2? This is pretty tough too. Hmm. We're seeing 30 people answering. 10 seconds left, five seconds. Please submit your answers. And the right answer is, so Mangalayaan 2 is not a Mars mission. So 54% were able to answer, wow. Yeah, just for um, everyone's information, so Chanwen, Perseverance, and Hope, these were Mars missions launched early this year. Chanwen mm -hmm. is from, from China, Perseverance of, is from NASA, of course. Hope is from Saudi Arabia. Mangali is actually also a Mars mission, but it's still upcoming from Israel. Or mm -hmm. So we have our leaderboard. Oh, so we have one person who has gotten everything right so far. Christian, whoever you are, let us know. 
Wow, there's only one Christian, I think. Okay. So we have one more question left. Yeah. Which yeah. of the following do not belong in the group? So we have the following choices. So which of these doesn't belong in the group? Is it Terra Hertz Explorer or T-Rex, Chang'e 7, Korea Pathfinder, or Chandrayaan 3? So which of the following do not belong in the group? So we have left, it is the last question. This is so exciting. Let's see if Christian got this right. <laughs> do, we so there, do we only give the prizes if he got it right all? <laughs> ooh, exciting. Maybe we will raffle it, but we'll see. So the right answer is Terra Hertz Explorer or T-Rex. Um, the other ones are actually satellites from Korea that were launched from Korea, if I'm right. Yeah. Right? So yeah. these this group are talking about lunar missions. So Chang'e, mm -hmm. Korea, Pathfinder, and Chandrayaan are all, all lunar missions. Mm -hmm. T-Rex, on the other hand, T-Rex, on the other hand, is a Mars mission, uh, I think, still being planned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chang'e was from China, Korea, Pathfinder is Korea, and Chandrayaan was from India. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Great. Oh, wow, we have <laughs> someone else. Congratulations. Um, congratulations to Kuya Will. Um, yeah, I, I think we can have like, we can give out prizes for like top three or. Okay, okay. let's take a <laughs> screenshot for the top three. So yeah, this ends our intermission. Um, we are quite good on time so we're actually just going to the next part now um so everyone who has just joined in or came back from the intermission uh you can again uh open the poll ev or send us questions at the link that has the links on the chat so we're going to be going through the project groups now um, which will be introduced again by christine yeah. Uh, hello again. So I'm going to be, me and Harley will introduce the project groups. I think this will be interesting for you. Well, for me, this is re really interesting because, um, as, as you know, SGC is composed of uh, a lot of members with different backgrounds, even if uh, they're not uh, from the space industry. Personally, I'm not from the space industry and uh, professionally, I'm a nutritionist, nutritionist dietitian uh, practicing here in the Philippines, but uh, I love space. I love astronomy, so I'm part of this SGC. So yeah, uh, Harley, do you, want to start, do you want to start? Yeah, but maybe before we start, can we reactivate again the Q&A, Paul, in case people have like suddenly good ideas on what to ask about project groups? Yes, definitely. And we also have the link in the chat. So yeah. if any of you guys would just like to like click on the link, feel free to go to the chat and just click slides.app.google um, backslash MBTT. Oh, it's a new one. All right, there. All right. So, so you can ask project questions. Project groups. Um, okay. All right. So uh, the core, the core of uh, SGC, not really the core, but a lot of the, uh, what do you call this, consistent uh, uh, activities right now revolves around project groups because every now and then, literally every now and then, they have activities or projects that they pursue. So this one is a highly collaborative effort between members from all over the world. And so like people from the Philippines, from Europe, from America, from Australia, they just meet online and then they come up with projects that they pursue. Uh, projects would be including like research or uh, uh, creating a paper or cre submitting an abstract to an online online friends, for example. Okay, I will be sharing only uh, from my from my project group, which is the commercial space project group, I think Christine has much more experience with the other project groups. But yeah, we can give an overview. So the commercial space project group is um, all about commercial space. 
uh, this is not just about commercial space flight uh, per se, but it's also about like the business side of uh, business side of space activities. Uh, we are also looking it's at o'clock. like the econ economics of space, those kinds of things. So what if it, oh, by the way, uh, if you guys want to understand more about the project groups, you can uh, simply go to the link uh, at the bottom of the presentation. So spacegeneration.org backslash projects, and you can view their uh, some summaries or like other information about each of these project groups. So for commercial space, one of the current uh, ongoing or one of the previous projects that we did, along with other project groups in SJAC, is actually the Mars City Design Competition. So the Mars City Design Competition was a work between all of these project groups. And what we did was basically a month-long collaboration wherein we designed a Mars City for 1 million people. And each of the project group were assigned a certain aspect of it, like the economic aspect, the humanitarian aspect, or... Uh, the space safety aspect of things. For the commercial space side, we were assigned economics. Uh, so we were supposed to design uh, an economic uh, platform or like an economic model for the Mars colony. So how will the 1 million Mars colony uh, be sustainable? What will be the economics uh, involved in that? So also we had to come up with like a political structure. So what will be the, what will be the sustainable form of government uh, in that uh, Mars colony. So I can't really talk much about the output of the project because it's still being judged by the Mars Society. But yeah, so uh, another another project that we are doing regarding space ownership in emerging space economy in Africa. So we are trying to create paper about how, how space entrepreneurship in Africa can be. Um, there are other upcoming projects that we haven't publicized just yet, so please feel free to go to the link and then register your name or express your interest that you'd want to collaborate with us, and then we can uh, reach you when there is a public call for a certain project. I'll turn it to Christine for the other uh, project groups. She has a lot, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a, not all, but I, I have three project groups here. So, uh, well, uh, this is interesting for me because aside from my uh, work as an executive secretary of SJC, uh, it, uh, I'm also interested to do other things for space. So I joined three uh, project groups. So as you can see, the project groups are uh, specialized. So we have space safety and sustainability. Uh, near Earth objects, I think they have an annual uh, search for asteroid campaign every year. And then we have, we also have space lawyers as members of SJC. So they are, uh, say, so they created the space law and policy uh, group. And then we, we have space exploration. Space exploration is, uh, what they do is I think um, they research about Space explorations. Uh, uh, when you think about space, that's it. I mean, uh, all about exploring space. And then we have also space and cybersecurity, the application of space to cybersecurity and vice versa. And yes, of course, uh, commercial space. I'm also part of this commercial space, but what I do is just uh, for now the admin stuff, the website part of the commercial space. And I'm also part of space medicine and life sciences uh, because uh, naturally naturally, I'm part of this because I'm a nutritionist um, by profession. So this is really an interesting for me. And we are uh, coming up with a lot of projects in the future and we will have a subgroup um, uh, in space nutrition. So that's really exciting for me. <laughs> and then we also have small satellites and the uh, space technologies for Earth application. This is the last uh, project group that I belong to as of the moment. So uh, what we do is we are, we I am part of a sub uh, team which uh, we, we just submitted a paper about Disaster risk reduction and the roles, of, the role of space NGOs to disaster risk reduction. Uh, we submitted the paper uh, to a, a scientific journal. So, well, that's big for me. If 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 you you like those kind of things, the um, 
uh, writing papers, writing scientific papers, technical papers. So we also do that. And also we have ethics and human rights. Uh, for now, these are the project groups, but I think uh, in, in a year or two, we will probably have other project uh, groups as well. I think uh, by next year or next next year, we will have a project group uh, focusing on um, women in space. So if you're interested in that, uh, please watch out for that project group. So uh, I think that's all for the project groups. If you're interested uh, with this, you can ask uh, ask questions later on uh, to know how you can um, apply or join certain project groups. Okay, so let's move on to scholarships. Uh, Harley, do you want to? Okay, all right. So, like I said, though, I like you've probably observed by now. There's a lot of events that's happening internationally, locally, and regionally, right? Um, some sometimes it's really hard to go to these events, especially because most of the time it requires you to fly to other places, for example. But don't worry, because SJC tries to help uh, young professionals and students who are space enthusiasts who are really deserving and would like to attend these events and to you know uh, expand their career or expand their network and really learn and contribute so uh, SJC has scholarships for any uh, for a lot of different kind of things like attending an event or maybe like an internship um, so what you can simply do is go to spacegeneration.org backslash scholarship and then just try to check if there's an for a certain for the next month or so. Uh, I've been I've been lucky to have been a recipient of one of this, which is the Asia Pacific Space Leadership. What happened was that I wanted to join you in sir. Um, so it was it was really exciting experience for me because that was that was my first flight outside the country and it's via a scholarship from SGAC. So what happened is that they paid for my for my ticket, they paid for my uh, for my accommodation as well. So it's not a full scholarship per se, but it's more than enough to you know let you be able to attend these kinds of events. So always always uh, what they call this watch out for scholarships. Every now and then there's a new one. There's a new scholarship or grant. For the context of the Philippines, we are the team. The local team is currently uh, working on, you know, coming up or uh, creating scholarships for Filipino space enthusiasts, so that you can join us in this SGAC event and maybe even outside SGAC events. So we are trying to look for sponsors or partnerships with the academia and maybe the corporate world to come up with these scholarships for young Filipino professionals. Um, again, those will be released as an update uh yeah just just be connected with us i guess yeah but i cannot promise about the filipino scholarship we're still working on it hopefully within the year or probably next year we really want to do it though yeah hopefully yeah yeah <laughs> okay i think it's uh time for the professional development by bernadette Right, right. So thank you, Harley, for that. Uh, yeah, Harley was one of the recipients of the first ever uh, Asia Pacific Space Leaders Award scholarship. So yeah, and now he is uh, he managed this event. So uh, thank you, Harley. Uh, so for the professional development, uh, next slide, please. So um, you might think, uh, what's in it for me and how can I actively uh, join SGAC activities? So we have um, SGAC vacancies. If you um, go to the at spacegeneration.org slash vacancies. So we have dozens of vacancies per month. So uh, basically if you wanna volunteer on something, um, not the project groups, but on SGAC itself. So we have numerous positions. So for example, want to be a part of an organizing team of an event, let's say an APSGW or any kind of event, 
So uh, we post it there. You want to be a national point of contact, we also post it there. Uh, but it's not just limited to that. For example, if you your background is in finance, or, uh, finance, so not really space. So that is your field of expertise and you want to contribute to SJC. For example, there is like a role of the treasurer as well. So all of it, all of these opportunities uh, you can find here uh, in the vacancies uh, page of SGAC. So uh, please uh, also um, watch out and look out for those. So um, yeah, the, the positions and the vacancies vary uh, per month. So um, yeah, please, uh, please just visit the website. Next slide, please. Um, For the next slide, uh, we do have a mentorship program. So of course, uh, SGA members are uh, young professionals and students. So we are all, um, we, we may be still in the early stages of our career. So it really helps for us to have a, some sort of mentor. So we do have a, um, a really good network of SGAC alumni and other experts in the space field who also volunteered to be a mentor. So basically you or we, any one of us can apply through the spacegeneration.org slash mentoring. So you can apply as a mentee or as a mentor as well. So um, if you're interested in this, uh, in furthering and advancing your career in space, getting advice, getting some support and guidance, this is the perfect opportunity for you. So the mentoring program. Next and last one for, for, for the professional development. Next slide, please. So we also have what we call the jobs board. So basically this is a platform where um, the existing internship opportunities or employment opportunities with our partner um, um, yeah, space companies. So you can access it here. So this is a, an opportunity for you to access uh, to potential employers, you know, build your leadership skills and connect with um, companies. So um, we also have uh, the newsletter where uh, you can also see uh, what are the existing um, opportunities, internships, employment opportunities, what not that you can apply to so um yeah this is accessible uh for members which and then the membership is free anyway so if you are a member you can definitely uh, avail of this service yeah so um that's it for the professional development i think we are on to our last part next slide please so why become a member? <laughs> this, I think, is um, the most important question for uh, this uh, this session. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. I think many of you are wondering, like, how do I join, and then um, why do I need to be a member? So, for the membership, uh, it is again free. So you just have to register on our website and uh, you uh, will get a confirmation and then you will be uh, technically be a, a member and you can subscribe to SGAC's mailing list. So get to know a lot of information happening in the space industry, opportunities, events, whatnot. You can also join the SGAC Slack group and contact your uh, national point of contacts, which are Harley and Florence uh, for local space events. And you can get involved uh, for, um, for this, I'd like to uh, ask um, um, Harley, Christine, and Florence as well on why they should become a member, why they should join us. <laughs> I can. I think I can go first. So, yeah. well, first of all, it's free. And if you love space, definitely uh, join SJC. Uh, and uh, for for likes me that that I'm I'm not really part of the space sector well not yet so um, this is a great opportunity for you to to uh, collaborate or and to work uh, with an international organization by work I mean uh, our work as well my work as executive secretary is like a real job and uh, it will take a lot of your not a lot of your time but some of your time. Uh, it, it really feels like 
you're working in a real company, in a real organization. Um, but yeah, uh, you get the feel of networking with uh, people ar around the world. I just had a meeting uh, last uh, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. to uh, with one of the project groups. So, well, one of uh, the challenges of uh, to be a uh, one of the challenges as a member of SJC, if you're really active, is that uh, most of the time your meeting will be at around 1 a.m. because the time zone is is different for uh, for each member. So you have to, yeah, yeah, you, you have to manage your time well. So yeah, if you love space, definitely join SJC. Yeah, and uh, we welcome any background at all. So anyone at all. So uh, yeah, uh, like, yeah, I'm also initially not from the space industry, but if you want to learn more or uh, even like shift to a career in space, then this is really um, the best opportunity. And yeah, like what Christine said, like it, you also gain um, the somehow work experience in an international environment, you get to meet a lot of people and learn a lot from them. Yeah, so Harley. <laughs> All right, so maybe from my perspective, I think the thing that I really appreciate about the most from SJAC is one thing that I've learned about space is that space can never be done alone. I mean, you cannot really isolate yourself. It's a highly collaborative space. Um, collaboration across regions, across international organizations is really encouraged. And why I really appreciate that is because I can see that uh, being practiced in within SJAC itself. Because think of it, I'm a Filipino working with a European that I've never met before, working with an Australian, working with someone from India, someone from Africa, all of those people I've never met but we're still doing the same thing. We're still talking about the same thing, space, and we're doing great work together. So that's what I love about SJAC. It's a really good network of uh, people all over the world and each and everyone has a unique perspective. Each and everyone respect everyone's perspective and they are so open to discussion. The collaborative works are phenomenal and yeah. Uh, like I said, it's the perfect platform to to net not just to network, but to actually learn. And if you really want to contribute into space, this is very well actually more than perfect, because there's there's a lot of opportunities you can you can work within SGAC or maybe network with someone who has a project outside SGAC but still in space. So you can do that as well. So yeah, uh, I love that collaborative spirit of SGAC. So if you love that as well, then definitely become a member. So I give it to Florence. I think she has a really good experience as well with SGAC. Yeah, so I actually, I'm actually a pretty new member. I just joined um, last January this year. But um, as I've shared, like SJC is a really, um, and as uh, Ate Christine, Bernadette, and Kuya H has already shared, like it's a really good avenue for you to be involved in space. I think, uh, especially us coming from the Philippines, a lot of us would dream about like, oh, working in the space industry, becoming an astronaut when we're young kids. But then since we come from a developing country, it's not very practical for us to go into that field. Or we also, don't, we also didn't have um, as much like resources or places to be involved, you know? Like we didn't really have any courses, for example, in astronomy back then and like, um, and we didn't have the FILSA back then. But uh, with SJC, you can actually be involved and be connected with many people and also see how um, the current uh, things you're doing. Like, for example, I am currently in the medical industry. Um, I am doing my pre-med. Uh, and I think a lot of Filipinos are also like in pre-med. And if you're ever interested in space, there is definitely a way for you to be involved um, through um, uh I think at first through SJC is where you could start. So please join us. Um, you can also click the link uh, on the chat uh, to register. So it's spacegeneration.com backslash register. Yeah. Uh, and join us. We, uh, you, you will meet a lot of amazing people in your life as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please. 
join us. Um, I think we're going to the Q&A session. Uh, and uh, as you've shared in, as you've asked questions in our, um, in our link, uh, we will be sharing to you uh, some questions that we have. Hmm. No one asked a question. Can oh, no, it's not that. Um, Christine, I think you have to go to the audience tools and choose the one you made called Christine. Apologies for the technical difficulties. <laughs> but we will be responding to your questions soon. So while um, Christine is preparing that, I think um, if anyone was an SJC member, I think we have some people in the audience who might want to share why they became an SJC member. Uh, Harley, I think you had some people in mind you want to call out <laughs> if they want to share. I think it was Bernadette, but I'm not sure if they're here. Yeah, I think, uh, let's see. I actually see some familiar places from all over the world. I can see Yasif, I've seen Yasif, and then I see Christopher. <laughs> I've met him in Singapore. Uh, Catherine is here. Are you with us? Maybe you can share something. Can you let us know by <laughs> ka? Hi, I think I think I have one who I'd love to hear her voice. Uh, Ate Erica, I think, is with us. Oh, really? Hi, Ate Erica. Can you hear us? But they might be shy because we didn't warn them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Okay, we have to let them unmute themselves. Sorry. I think now participants can unmute themselves. So this part of the event is already like about networking. So you guys can turn on your camera and then join us maybe as we exchange conversation. But is the Q&A already working, Christine? Uh, yeah, yeah, I found it. <laughs> Wait. Okay, cool. Let's try to do the Q&A first. I think uh, Aterika is... Oh, yeah. I think she, she didn't mute her herself. There. Hey, sorry, I was late. I'm from Pacific Standard Time. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. So yeah, because Ate Erica is in the US right now, so she's joining us at a really weird time. Hello. Hello, Ate Catherine. Ah uh, yes, ah uh, it's nice to hear everyone, <laughs> and at Erica as well. <laughs> um, the question of why join SGAC is really um I would not have joined SGAC if not for Astronomical Society from the University of the Philippines. I came in as a student um very long time ago in the one of the organization that I really joined in and participated and had full commitment was uh, UP Astro Astrosoft because yeah, why not one day working in space agency and uh, having a work for Filipinos to become astronauts too. So because of Bernadette and the other Astrosoft uh, members, uh, I came back to do my master's and still um, committed myself to Astrosoft and 
came to know about SJAC and participated in some of their events. The first one I was able to attend in Athens, Greece, way back in 2017. It was a great experience, especially for us with limited resources. And have been working as well with last year, uh, last year I think, with Harley at SJAC at uh, ASEAN in Thailand. It was um, a very good um, experience, not only experience, but a way of igniting your passion about space with people who are also ignited to uh, have a dream for the country. And I'm so happy to, because Christine is a nutritionist dietitian, I'm also a nutritionist dietitian and have been really dreaming um, for Filipinos to become astronauts as well in the future and basically working out good nutrition for monarch children for our uh, maybe one day um, some of the monarch children will become um, one um, uh, venturing into space so I'm so happy to be hearing all of you and well, um, to be working in the future with you as well so good job guys thank, thank, you. thank you yes so Hopefully, we can send the Filipino food to space. Can you see my screen? Can so, you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, but I think we can also hear from Ate Erika if she wants to share some experience, if she's still here. I'm not sure. And they can also turn on their video if they'd like. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I'm not sure if at Erica is still here, but maybe we can go back to them later. So we can cater to Q&As for now. So we have a couple of questions that were sent to our uh, slides link and uh, Christine is currently showing them to us. So we have one from Augustine Lawrence Timothy Diang. Uh, are there ways for people under 18 to get involved? Um, there was also a question about how high school students can get involved and what can we do to promote space in the Philippines via education? Uh, would there be anyone who'd like to answer? Christine, because I think you have a more knowledge about like the legality. Uh, Bernadette. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I, I started I started with astronomy first uh, uh, in UP Diliman, in the University of the Philippines Diliman, just like Ate Catherine and Ate, Ate Erika. So I started there. So uh, first I was interested in astronomy, just astronomy, not really space. So and then I ventured to space. So I think uh, one of the best ways you can do if you're uh, under 18 or in your high school is to look for a club or an organization with the same interest in astronomy or in space or if or if you don't have uh, an organization near you you can create one <laughs> why not so and uh, it's not i think it's not that difficult right now to to find uh, other people with the same interest with the internet because uh, when I was your age, <laughs> it, it was harder for us <laughs> in my age at that time. And, uh, to, to add to that, so technically SJC members have to be at least 18 years old. But what we can do is like partner with organizations or institutions for some activity or events or anything to promote space or something uh, space education for children so that we we can do that's one way uh, how we can um, collaborate on this but they they won't be officially members but we can uh, work on something uh, which uh, yeah which can be helpful I think one organization, oh, go on first. I go, go on, go on. Yeah, so I think one organization I can share about um, is SSERD Philippines. Um, it is Society for Space Education, Re Research and Development. Um, I and uh, some high school, actually a lot of high school students are currently members uh, in that organization. And then after they turn 18, they kind of transition to SJC. So in SSERD, the, things that they do are more of like 
getting educated about like basic space science or like astronomy, um, uh, aerodynamics, learning how to use a telescope, uh, learning about like rocketry and satellites. Uh, we have all of those programs uh, and they also design uh, astro space camps for ages 18 and below or around 18. So I think that's a great way for you to be involved. And then afterwards, um, when you turn 18, you can join SJC and be more prepared. So, Ate Christine? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, one of the activities of Harley in the pipeline is uh, space education outreach. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. Hopefully, uh, we can I wouldn't do activities. Yeah, I wouldn't want to delve too much into this, but uh, one of the things that we need to take into account when we want to promote space uh, education in the Philippines is that uh, there's there's a, there's a unique approach to how you encourage students to become a space enthusiast. And we need to take into account that uh, you can enter into the space industry via a technical course or a non-technical course. So as, as Christine said, there's a pipeline for that. So if you'd like to know more, you can join us in our Slack group and then we can discuss how we will develop the model for this particular activity. So yeah. All right, maybe we can get to the next question. So our next question is, who are eligible to be granted scholarships? Um, and how are the scholarships given? Like, are they through institutions? Like, I'm just like, saying these like related questions as well. Um, and then how can we apply? So, right. uh, Harley? Okay. Um, I'm just going to share my experience, but it, it might not be applicable for every scholarship. But most of the scholarships are eligible for SGAC members. So you have to be 18, to 18 and above to be able to do that. Uh, most of the requirements would be uh, like, do you have a participation, past participation with SGAC? Like, did you volunteer? Were, were there collaborations that you've worked on? Those kinds of things. So um, what, what, what might probably be best is that you can, you can expose yourself into collaborations or volunteer programs within SPC so that you'll have a higher chance of being uh, granted the particular scholarship. But not all of those would require SJC uh, uh, participation. Uh, it depends on who, are, who is offering the scholarship. So how do you register? Uh, you can go to spacegeneration.org slash scholarships and you can... Uh, watch basically if there's a new scholarship available. So yeah, I think Bernadette has some idea as well on how scholarships are made. Yes, yes. So usually scholarships are tied to an event. So it's a scholarship for you to get the chance to, let's say, attend the IAC or the APSGW or any other event. So uh, if uh, you look at the SGAC's webpage and you know follow SGAC on social media as well. So uh, we post it uh, all the time there, and uh, yeah, you basically just have to apply. So you uh, you just have to submit some documents. Uh, usually, there's no like written exam or whatnot, whatever. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So so yeah, it's um, um, purely on that uh, basis. Uh, however, if uh, you are an active SGAC member and uh, in the space uh, sector as well, so of course that will uh, be really good in your application. So I suggest you become a member and uh, try to get involved with a project group or try to volunteer on something. And then once there are scholarships, uh, grab the opportunity and uh, apply. Yeah. Um, and then another question is how can we attend events related to space? So, uh, anyone? Easy, Easy question. Yeah. So, uh, events related oh, to space. Yeah. Hello. Oh, maybe I can, I can give an answer. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So I think the easiest to submit and then they give like the email content would be like, there's an event about this and that you might want to join. 
there's an opening about this and that, you might want to join. So I think that's the easiest and probably the best contribution uh, with regards to this question that SJAC can offer. They have really good, like basically a database of events everywhere in yeah. the world because and some of the events are like uh, regional or international, like literally all over the world. So yeah, that's my suggestion. Yeah. And we also post every space event there is. Most, yeah. most of them, by the way, yeah. And uh, lastly, we didn't mention it, uh, I, I guess, in the in the previous slides, but we do have a lot of webinars from time to time as well, especially now in the uh, COVID era. So uh, I, I guess, uh, yeah, that's... Um, one of the easiest ways to join as well. So webinars on a, a lot of topics. So project groups have these webinars on special topics. So yeah, if you're interested, just uh, check it out as well. Oh yeah, I forgot as well. Aside from the mailing list, if you don't want to receive emails, you can follow our social media account. We all post events there, but it's it's mostly limited to SGAC events, but every now and then we can also feature, feature some like uh, outside SGAC space related events. So yeah, mailing list and social media accounts. All right, can we move to the next question? So our next right. question is, um, how can we join different project groups? Um, so anyone wanna share how they joined their first project group? Uh, I think I can, I can yes, give up. So there's no singular formula or method to join project groups because every project group has their own like acceptance methodology. It depends on who the project co-lead is. Um, but the simplest way to go is go to spacegeneration.org backslash project group or just look for the project groups tab. And then Every project group has like a registration form that you can fill up to, to let them know that you are interested to join their project group. Um, some of the project groups, however, only accept new members if there's a new project ongoing. That is to keep everyone uh, being useful, meaning like they don't want to have a big pool of project members, but there's very few uh, uh, projects ongoing. So there's that as well. But you can always go there and then submit your application uh, application form, by the way, is just like basic details about you, why you want to join the group and whatnot. It's not like a technical exam or anything. So yeah, you can also join multiple project groups if you want to. So like Christina's has a really good experience about that as well. Uh, yeah, uh, well, for me, I just joined their uh, Slack group. So there you can you can join their Slack group. Uh, um, uh, research or, or look into their website on how they can be um, contacted or you can email the project leads there so that's that's i think the three ways that you can connect to um to them or or uh, what i can help you is you can email me and then i can refer uh, refer you to them I think uh, once we have the Slack group for the Philippine SGAC members, so it's easy to ask any questions there as well. So it can help you out. Yeah. yeah. So I think that is the last question that is related to SJC in general for now. Um, we would like to have, uh, so we are having a coffee hour after this. So we can, there are still a lot of like, uh, more specific questions, more uh, like uh, detailed personal based questions in the slides that we saw um, in the link that you uh, sent your questions. And we will be addressing that later in the coffee hour. So we'll be having a coffee hour. Um, for now, I think we're gonna have a photo opportunity. Um, so we wanna ask uh, Christine to please uh, put in Oh, actually, we, everyone can just turn on their cameras if you can, and we will take a photo with everyone around. Yes, please. So don't be shy. Uh, yes. Take a group photo. <laughs> so everyone, please turn on your videos. For everyone. Yeah, Hello. just for everyone before they, they go <laughs> later. 
Um, so uh, this webinar is a series, right? So there's a day two. So we'd love for you to join us tomorrow for a more intuitive, more detailed discussion particularly in and what will be the outlook for the space industry in the Asia Pacific region as a whole. So we have two amazing speakers. We were able to invite Dr. Marciano, who is the Director General of the Philippine Space Agency. So we are very honored to invite him and listen to him tomorrow. And then we also have uh, Mr. Nicolas Boros, who is the CEO of Ratatouille. Um, he is into um, understanding the space industry in the Asia Pacific region. So if you, if you want to dive deeper into this one, then yeah, let's see each other again tomorrow after this one. All right. So yeah, let's take a photo of this team. Um, okay, it's actually a lot of people. <laughs> so I think we have to take two photos. Um, so everyone, one, two, yeah. three, smile. Wait. Um, Actually, let me just open Zoom on my other laptop. I think we can do that as well. Yeah, I, I also took photos already. <laughs> oh, okay, so we can just like another one, smile. Great, I think we're good. Uh, Bernadette, you already took photos as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We think. actually have more people coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, today, yeah. This just the introduction to SGAC day. So tomorrow we will be digging deeper into space issues and uh, it will be a very fun panel, panel discussion and I'm sure you have a lot of questions. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we will be stopping the live stream at this point, right? Uh, mm -hmm.